in the last 10 years only, the major gold standard scientific journals have revealed that there is within the human body a cell system that heals our bodies from cradle to grave, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, for all of our lives. It is a healing organ system. This discovery is an absolute quantum leap in medical science, the likes of which we've not seen for 100 years. Let's take a look at medical history, because when you have events that occur cyclically every 100 years, there's no one around to remember what it was like before the discoveries. Advances in medicine have saved vastly more lives than have been lost in all the wars in history, Dr. Carl Sagan. Henry Kissinger, history is not, of course, a cookbook offering pre-tested recipes. It teaches by analogy all the factors are going to be a little different, but the same progression of events are likely to happen. Medicine evolves through time. Anybody, anybody know what this is? What's this guy doing with the funny hat? He's a doctor, and time's passed. Well, he's putting a hole in the calvarium, in the, in the bone of the skull. And all through history, anthropologists have found that when they dig up these graves centuries and centuries ago, every, you know, every few uh, uh, skeletons have holes in their head. And some of them clearly have healed. So some, uh, some maybe the patient didn't survive, but others they survived long enough to heal. Okay? Trepanation, it's called. It is enormously informative. In fact, I would probably say it's my main point. To just look at the history over the last 400 years of medicine. And this, these little dots, these little uh, purple dots, show the, age, the average age expected before you die. Okay? Back in 1800, you lived to be 35 on average, maybe 40. So clearly, this trepanation didn't work very well. Now, something happened here. Anybody know what it is? Early 1800s, something happened and the curve went up. People started to live longer. It was the discovery of the immune system by Dr. Edward Jenner when he created his smallpox, cowpox vaccine and launched the, the vaccine medical paradigm, which has changed the world. It changed the human condition. In fact, Dr. Edward Jenner has been, uh, by virtually every uh, medical historian, has been stated to be uh, the person who, with one action, changed the human condition saved more lives and eliminated vast human suffering uh, on a scale that's never been repeated. Now, if, that's, if this is all that would have happened, there would have been a, uh, a leveling off of how, how long you get to live. But something happened right here. Anybody know what that is? There was a second. Now, it's important to realize it was only the second thing that happened. We usually think of medicine as evolving constantly. It really doesn't. It, it, it evolves in one felt swoop, vaccines. Now, there was another one here. Anybody know? Uh, what was that? Antibiotics, exactly. Very good. Uh, Sir Isaac, Isaac uh, Alexander Fleming. Uh, discovered penicillin. And it was another natural DNA controlled ability to heal 
that, like the immune system, existed before mankind could stand up on their hind legs. These two, these two discoveries change the human condition drastically. It's very hard to appreciate it now because it's all here now. You're born and it's all there. You get your vaccinations, you have your antibiotics if you get sick, but it wasn't like that the whole time. And uh, these two amazing evolutions in medicine were discovered. They were not invented. That's a huge uh, uh, monumental distinction. Before them, people died like flies, one right after another. Tetanus, nobody worries about tetanus because you all got your tetanus shot. Whooping cough, hemophilus meningitis, congenital rubella, which resulted in microcephaly and mental retardation. Tuberculosis, of course. They used to have farms for people to go when their lungs were destroyed by tuberculosis bacteria. Polio. These little boxes are where people that had polio that no longer had the ability to breathe spontaneously because of the neurologic damage. And this was before we had positive pressure respirator, uh, respirators, so they had to be encased so that their lungs would expand by uh, uh, changing the pressure within the, uh, the cavity of this machine. They spent their entire lives in those machines because they'd die the minute they were taken out. So let's look at modern medicine. Because we certainly know that the trepanation was painful, bloody, dangerous, and you could die whether you had it or you didn't have it. They felt that maybe you'd died less if you did have it. So let's take a modern look. This is a coronary artery bypass graft. And basically what they do is they take a saw, that's the saw, and they saw the sternum in half. And then they take a retractor and they pull it apart so they can get at the heart. And then, of course, they sew in the various bypass grabs of various types so that they can jump the, the obstruction and blood flow. It's impressive. It's expensive, very high tech. It must be very effective. How could they possibly do this to a person if it really, really didn't help? So you see, the point I'm making here, I haven't told you the punchline yet, but the point I'm making here is that if we're going to replace the old paradigm with a new paradigm in medicine, we need to know what the old paradigm paradigm value is. Everybody thinks this is an important surgery. There may be some people in the audience that have had it. Hippocrates, of several remedies, the physician should choose the least sensational. 89 out of 100 people that get this surgery do not add a day to their lives, statistically. Only 11% benefit and uh, uh, over just giving aspirin. And there are some lesions, some abnormalities that you actually will die sooner. It took them decades to figure it out. So that's the old paradigm. So how should we judge a medical procedure? How do you judge it? You don't need to be a doctor to judge it. The amount of human lives that are saved and the amount of averted human suffering is how you judge a medical procedure. Not by how fancy and impressive the high technology. That is a dangerous infatuation. 
Now, here's another procedure that if your blood flow to your brain is, is uh, at risk, there's a chance you could get a stroke. So they do this procedure on your neck to cut out the atherosclerotic plaque that's in there so that the blood can flow freely. It's impressive. It's expensive. It's high tech. It's got to be good. Who would cut your neck like this unless it was terrific? 89 out of 100 patients that get this procedure don't benefit at all. They just get the surgery. So that's the old paradigm. I guess what this means is, be careful about asking me, is a, our adult stem cells 100% at making you better? No, not at our current level of understanding. But the more we treat and the more we understand about natural adult stem cells, the better it gets. And our averages have gone up. The problem is there's not enough doctors working on it. And my, uh, my goal is to bring this wonderful treatment that you're all at least somewhat interested in to the United States so that our fine doctors can do it here. That's my mission. Albert Einstein, not a unsharp individual. Look deeply into nature, and then you will understand everything. And we only know one one thousandth of what nature has to teach us. Hippocrates, natural forces within us are the true healers of disease. This is a white blood cell, the big blob there. It's obviously very, very magnified. And then you have the little red blood cells around it. And the little black dot in front of it, you'll, you'll see it, chase it around in a minute. Those are bacteria. Now, the white blood cell has to kill that bacterium. But it can't be putting out poisons because it'll kill the other cells. So it's got to engulf it. Put it in a little package and kill it that way. So it's chasing it. Look at it. And it will eventually engulf it and kill it. And if we didn't have those, we'd all be dead already. There we go. The reason that the white blood cells do what they do, they move around like that way, is that there are these little droplets of information, these little biochemicals via which the cells communicate with one another. Those little droplets from the yellow to the purple cell might be telling it, make more yellow cells, make more purple cells, or secrete your own cytokines and, and bring a recruitment in from the bone marrow so we have more cells. It could be telling the other cells, stop what you're doing. It's all it, these cells communicate with one another via these biochemicals, which we know a lot about now, cytokines. Now, this is a little pipette with a white blood cell under high magnification, and all it's doing is putting out a little bit of cytokine. Look at that white blood cell chase it. It's attracted to it. Cells move. All right. Uh, let's turn our attention for a second. Just what is a stem cell anyway? It has to do with when, a, when the cells replicate, when they duplicate, when they make another cell, okay? Usually cells make another cell that looks just like the first one, okay? That's linear, linear reproduction. Now, uh-oh we got a cell that doesn't look like the rest of them. So let me ask you, 